Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. You know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. Today, let's do the whole darn weekend. Saturday, April the 6th, is National Sorry Charlie Day. It is also New Beers Eve, National Caramel Popcorn Day, National Student Athlete Day, National Teflon Day, and National Tartan Day. Also, National Love Our Children Day. Sunday, the 7th of April, is National Beer Day. Now, Keep in mind, it was New Beer's Eve, Saturday. Sunday is New Beer Day. See what they did there? Okay. Also, National Coffee Cake Day, National No Housework Day, National Girl Me Too Day, and National Handmade Day. All of those things happening this weekend. And I've got a guest. I certainly have a guest today. I have Curly Stooge. Okay. Oh. I don't really have Curly Stooge, but I do have one of the Grand Stooges, Curly G. He's the real-life grandson of Curly Howard from the Three Stooges, and we're going to be chatting with him coming up later in the program. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Do you have a pretty good sense of humor? You might like this. Early in the morning each day and every day, we share something weird to make people laugh at weirdgiftoftheday.com. You don't need to sign up for anything. You don't even need to spend a penny. Just follow the page on Facebook and get a smile to start each day when we share the weird gift of the day. Not on Facebook? That's okay. You can see the weird gifts on our website too. Weirdgiftoftheday.com. That's weirdgiftoftheday.com. Now, surveys and studies and such brought to you by BetterCreditCards.net. A British study found that dubstep music could be used as mosquito repellent because the sound drives bugs away. What is dubstep music? It's like music that you hear like in a club. That oh, okay. You know, that just really, I don't know what you call it, dubstep music. I guess music. I didn't know that's what it was called. Um, okay. uh, you might think of it as techno, and I know there's sure, a difference. Okay, yeah. Somebody listening here in techno, they're like, oh, those two completely different things. We're old people. We don't know the difference. <laughs> But uh, it might also drive your neighbors and you away. So uh, there's no mosquitoes there, but none of us old people either. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Is your credit card a good fit for you? How did you even get the card you have now? Was it mailed to you? Those are usually the worst cards. They typically have higher fees and rates. Someone has to pay all that postage to mail out millions of cards every day. If you like a better credit card, Check out the website bettercreditcards.net. This is a great place to find the cards that are usually a better fit for you. Bettercreditcards.net. That's bettercreditcards.net. And this is Your Brain on Drugs, brought to you by timeforrehab.com. According to an arrest report, apparently in an in a bid to mask the spray of booze, a suspected drunk driver was spraying Axe body spray, not, not on his armpits not on his clothing in his mouth oh yeah a car driven by 49 year old efren uh, e-f-r-e-n efren mencina ramirez i probably butchered that i'm so sorry mr mencina ramirez he was pulled over in uh, spartanburg area and it says here they saw him swerving and he was speeding when they pulled him over they saw a bunch of empty corona beer cans in the car and he was spraying axe body spray in his mouth they think, to cover up the smell of booze. He still smelled like booze, by the way. They finally did get a blood alcohol content. It was twice the legal limit. He was charged with drunk driving, driving without a license, driving without insurance, and carrying open containers of alcohol. So don't do that. Bad idea. Thanks for listening. That's what happens when your brain is on drugs. Now, big screen, little screen, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. Kim Kardashian told Jimmy Kimmel that she picks out her baby names by letting the whole family weigh in and then waiting three or four days after the baby is born to figure out what the baby looks like and then says, that's what we're going with. Okay. So that's not exactly how I thought they chose their names. I thought it was like randomly pulling a name out of Just a fishbowl. Just open a dictionary and yeah. point. No, I don't know. There, there are people that, you know, have been making fun of them about the baby names. So we're going to move forward. With the next story. How about this one? Discovery Channel is going to air a special this weekend called Expedition Unknown. They're going to open the tomb of an Egyptian mummy on live TV. That's happening this weekend on Discovery. They've raised $10 million to show this Egyptian mummy on live TV. How exciting do you think it's going to be? You think this mummy is going to murder someone while they're watching? 
I sure hope not. That's not what's going to happen. It's going to they're going to open and go. Oh look, he's all That's wrapped a up. Mummy. Or it could be like uh, Al Capone's uh, vault or whatever it was. Do you remember Telly? They empty. crack it open on live TV and they're like, and yeah. we found nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. We'll be back after this commercial break. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. Was, were you watching that too? That. I didn't watch it live, oh, but did. I remember seeing. Uh, you know, <laughs> My dad was clips. so excited. We're watching it. We're like. Yeah, what a letdown. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to bed. Thanks for listening to Big Screen, Little Screen, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. Here's a fun trip back to the 80s. Surely you can't be serious. Join us in Las Vegas for 80s in the desert May 3rd and 4th. Hang out with other 80s fans. International language of love. Meet several 80s icons from the movies and rock out to awesome music from the 80s. Flock of Seagulls, The Romantics, Mr. Mister, Scandal with Patty Smythe, Thomas Dolby, Pretty Poison and more. See the full list of fans and icons at RadioTravelGroup.com. That's RadioTravelGroup.com. Now your scoop of the day for this weekend, brought to you by BetterCreditCards.net. A Chinese prison has installed artificial intelligence monitors in every cell to make escaping impossible. That's interesting. I never thought of that. So they've got these uh, monitors in every cell to make sure there's people in there, and if they try to do anything you know, wonky, they're going to get caught. So that's an uh, interesting idea. Well, shouldn't there be monitors? I mean, I guess, I, I guess I'm guess i shocked that there's not more monitors on the cells already. I don't know how all this stuff works, but the, the Chinese prison has that little thing all figured out. Toyota has unveiled a basketball-playing robot in Tokyo that can shoot three-pointers with startling accuracy. The 6-foot, 10-inch robot is considered the top artificial intelligence athlete in the why, world. Why would we need this? Um, because. So so we're going to take jobs away from basketball <laughs> players now, too, and just I, have a team teams of robots? No, but I think humans versus robots would be fun to watch. Oh, my gosh. This is the most ridiculous <laughs> thing ever. I don't know. I'm not a sports guy. This doesn't affect me. If you're a big sports person, you're, you know, your bracket was already busted, and now you're upset about this, too. Just calm down. I don't think it's a big deal. Hey, by the way, I had another perfect bracket this year, Heidi. Mm-hmm. My secret to the perfect bracket, wait until it's done and then fill it out. Mm-hmm. So much easier. Uh, magician David Blaine is being investigated by the NYPD for making unwanted sexual advances against two women. So apparently they did see his sleight of hand. <laughs> Not a very good magician there, David Blaine. Secret Service confirmed the arrest of a Chinese woman who was carrying malware at Mar-a-Lago last weekend. I don't know what malware is. Do you know what that is? I think it's a computer virus, isn't it? Malware? So how was she carrying that around? Maybe like on a little thumb on drive a or something? disk or something? Maybe she was going to try and infect the... I don't know. I don't understand what that means. I should maybe click on the link and read it. But again, that happened uh, last week. Last weekend, so almost a week ago now. I See, why am I always the last one to find out about these things? I hadn't heard about that. I guess it's because I know nothing about it, <laughs> and I don't really matter. That's probably a good reason. And we got one last story we're going to get to here, and uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time on this one because this is very bizarre, but it's sweeping the nation. It's the latest yoga craze called Lemoga. L E M O G A. First of Which all, have you what? have you heard of any of this stuff at all? Any no. of this sounded normal or not normal? But any of this sounded familiar? No, not to me. It is a yoga class where lemurs walk around while you're posing. <laughs> so, so this requires this is a tough class. It requires lemurs and people interested in doing yoga while the lemurs are present. And it doesn't say in the story that they're walking on you. It just says while they're walking around while what everyone's posing. What on earth is wrong with but, people? But I think that they would be walking on you because they first there was goat yoga. What? Yeah. So th- this is the this is why we're taking a moment to talk about this. It started out with goat yoga, and then there was dog yoga. Now we've got lemur yoga, and it's even got a name, Lemoga. And does this help in some way? Apparently, um, I have, I got to admit, and I know this is going to come as a shock to many people. I have never ever participated in yoga that I know of. <laughs> if, if I was stretching one time ugh, and everybody else happened to be doing it, I was like, oh, what are we doing? Uh, oh, we're doing yoga? I didn't know that's what we were doing. <laughs> I was just yawning. Uh, I've got nothing against people who do, by the way. It doesn't bother me. You do that, go do what you want to do. You want to hang out with a, a lemur and do yoga? That's fine. Uh, and I don't even think it's weird. I think it's just something that I wouldn't do. But it's sweeping the nation, according to this story. How many lemurs are out there? <laughs> that's, 
<laughs> it's that, like a, this is so bizarre. I could see me. the dog yoga. You can find dogs all over the place. I could even see cat yoga, but that's not even mentioned. Cats are pretty readily available. Lemur yoga? I don't know where they're finding the lemurs. That's my that's my question. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. Do you have IRS tax problems? Are they keeping you up at night? Afraid to open your own mail or even answer your telephone? If your tax problems are affecting your family life, you need to know you have options. You have rights. And we'll make sure you get them. Call and speak with Mike Habib, the tax expert who will handle your case at 877-78-TAXES or online at myirstaxrelief.com. That's 877-78-TAXES or myirstaxrelief.com. Thank you so much for listening to The John and Heidi Show. We've got a special guest joining us today. I think this is really kind of a cool thing. I am a big fan of the Three Stooges, always have been. And then uh, just recently, I was talking to a, a mutual acquaintance. Uh, we both uh, we both know this gentleman, and uh, he connected us. We're talking to one of the Grand Stooges right now. It's Curly's grandson. How are you doing, sir? Oh, hold on a second, John and Heidi. I'm just getting out of the shower. <laughs> oh, okay, guys. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Again, Brad is his first name, and uh, he's Curly Howard's grandson. And now you guys have a thing called the Grand Stooges, and, and you've got a website set up. I'm on there right now. This is really kind of cool. Yeah. It's, uh, since we're the grandchildren, I thought, what a better name than to call ourselves the Grand Stooges. So we've got uh, we've got some uh, uh, rare family photos on there. We also have a lot of uh, footages from the uh, three Stooges fan club meetings and all the wonderful fans. It's a great uh, it's a great site. A lot of people are digging it. That's really cool. And now you guys were related to uh, officially Curly Howard is your grandfather, but you're related to Mo and you're related to Shemp. And you know, so for people that are not familiar with the three Stooges and and there's more than three, which is kind of weird as well. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that history. Yes. So uh, Mo, Shemp, and Curly are brothers. So since Curly is my grandfather, that makes Mo and Shemp my great uncles. So isn't that amazing? That's really cool. Now, in, in addition to them, there's Larry Fine. Is he a relative as well? Uh, Larry was not a relative. He was just uh, obviously a very close friend. Um, he came from Philadelphia. They found him um, as one of the Stooges had left. Uh, they found Larry Fine, and he became uh, one of the staples uh, to the three Stooges, the nucleus of Mo, Larry, and Curly. Uh, the job just couldn't get done without Larry. Larry was just an amazing, uh, an amazing actor, and he brought so much to the trio. So just a, a true gem. And then uh, Shemp, uh, which, of course, uh, started actually with Mo. It was Shemp and Mo that went uh, to Vaudeville to, uh, to find out uh, what it was all about. They had, they had snuck away from the house a few weekends and saw some vaudeville acts, and they were... They were just uh, amazed at what they saw. So they, they kind of started it, and then they, uh, they wound up filling in uh, with uh, little, uh, little Curly. Uh, Curly was the youngest brother, and he uh, did his thing. And then after that, uh, of course, after my grandfather passed, unfortunately, in uh, 1952, uh, the act had to go on. So they uh, had two more Curlies that actually uh, filled the void in through the 70s, which was Joe Besser and uh, Joe uh, Dorita. So um, all of them, uh, amazing actors. You know, a lot of people will say, you know, they weren't as good as Curly. You know, Curly Howard was Curly Howard. No one's going to be Curly Howard. Yeah. But the other the other actors kept the show going, and uh, it's a testament to how great all of them really, really are. What year did the Three Stooges actually you know, first start making the short films that they made? Uh, I'm not historian and i should know all of that i believe it was in the i would have to say in the in the 40s and then this this went on all the way until the 1970s is how long this went yeah absolutely they 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 went they were doing uh when they weren't doing um shorts they were doing movies kind of in the end of their career and then they started doing uh, the three stooges um had a cartoon the three stooges cartoon and they were doing the voices they were doing commercials so they were they were carrying on um you know, with the three stages tradition, uh, well into the seventies and they had to make a living, you know, they were, they, they were doing uh, their thing and in their prime and things were winding down and they had to provide for their family. So, uh, that's off to them. They were quite the hard workers. <laughs> Not like you, you, 
you, John, and you, Heidi, you guys don't work quite as hard as the students did, and I know you don't get slapped enough. <laughs> no, there's not enough slapping. I would never, I would, I, yeah, I would never slap Heidi. I don't hit women. They just hit me. <laughs> That's awesome. Again, visiting with Brad. He is one of the Grand Stooges. Now, how many Grand Stooges are there, Brad? Well, as, as far as uh, my mother gave birth to my older brother, Darren, my older sister, Andrea, and then I'm the baby of the family. So there's three of us. That is the part of Curly Howard's Grand Stooges. But then you've got other Grand Stooges that are from uh, the other parts of the family. you got Shemp's family and... Mo's family, they all have grandchildren, uh, but uh, I have my brother and my sister, and I love them to death, and they're, uh, they're amazing themselves, very, very talented. Uh, my brother is an accomplished musical director and an actor, and my, my sister is an accomplished uh, concert singer, and she's, uh, we're just a hoot. You get us three together, and we're, we're the grand students. We're just a, a barrel of Laughs. That's awesome. Now, the uh, the Grand Stooges, I'm on the website, thegrandstooges.com, which is really easy to find. We'll throw a link to that, too. But in addition to, to the website, and you know, you've got a lot of great history on here. This is really cool. But you also uh, do a stage show. At, what is the name of the stage show that you do, and, and, and uh, how does that work? Yeah, it's the Three Stooges Live. We, just, uh, we started this uh, just at the end of 2018. Uh, we had a couple road shows, and... And really what it is, it is uh, five or six of your favorite bits that we took these shorts and then we turned them into uh, taking it live on the stage. We have uh, some music added, we have um, some dancing, and then we add some new elements. Um, we have uh, 3D imaging and backdrops. And uh, the shows that we've done so far, the, uh, the fans, are uh, they're amazed. I mean, it really is its its so endearing to have uh, do a show, have them give you standing ovations, have them stay for the Q and A's, and then and then stay to take pictures and and shake uh, the cat's hand and shake my hand and to thank us uh, for you know giving them an hour and a half of just forgetting about today's world and going back to when obviously times were you know it wasn't it wasn't the best for everybody but it really was a time when um, uh, the Three Stooges um, helped them through. Uh, good times and the bad times, and it's just it, it's just great. The, the fans are the, they're digging it from, and we're talking children are there, uh, uh, young adults are there. We've got uh, older people that are there, senior citizens are there. It's just it was a mix. It was the audience was so mixed and it was so well received that uh, we've got gigs uh, in 2019. We're going to be uh, coming out to Florida. I think we're going to be in Pembroke and Boca Raton uh, early March, and then. Uh, West Palm Beach uh, a week after that, and then we should have uh, more theater dates lined up. So I'm hoping that the listeners, uh, wherever they are, will uh, will be posting on uh, the Three Stooges Live. They can find it on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. Um, they can come to uh, find Curly G on Facebook. That's my little alias for short for Curly's grandson. They can find me at Brad Server. They can look up Curly's grandson. You can Google it. You're going to find me. There's no way around it. I'm going to be there, and I'm going to be poking their eyes out. <laughs> certainly. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Yeah, you well, do that pretty well, Johnny Wani. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, the thing that's fun, again, like I said, I grew up watching your grandfather and your uncles and their friend Larry on, on television, uh, but it's it's something that's really interesting. It It didn't start on television. These were the shorts that were on before other movies. And it's it's really cool that when television came around, it was kind of a rebirth for them, wasn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, they were doing a lot of uh, full features and stuff, and then, yes, obviously they did the shorts, but like you said, they would start movies with these shorts, and um, so they were they were getting a lot of airtime, and it really it really helped their careers. And you know what? We got we got uh, networks like MeTV that are going to be showing the Stooges, and of course they're on. They do the marathons when we have holidays, but I think we need more. The Stooges need to be on more because more than ever we need laughter because this uh, this world of ours really isn't the funniest. I mean, there's some fun stuff going on and some funny stuff, wacky stuff going on uh, in uh, our little uh, D.C. area, but what we really need is people uh, getting back to the grassroots of, uh, of comedy, of music, of musicals, and laughing and loving Absolutely, and, and being compassionate to uh, being compassionate to others is the number one thing. So you know, my message is keep the laughter alive, 
uh, keep loving and, and keep being compassionate. And you know what? Our world can only be a better place. It, that's, that's just what comes out of it. Absolutely. Our guest today is Curly G. His real name is Brad Server, but he's Curly's grandson. He's one of the Grand Stooges. I've got a link to the website, thegrandstooges.com. Also going to throw a link to the live show information and all of the information if you'd like to reach out to Brad. I think it would be awesome to have this show in our area. So uh, if somebody wants to reach out and, and connect with him and say, hey, bring that show here, I think that would be a ton of fun. Absolutely, absolutely. And also, we got some video content. I don't uh, I don't know if you got to see any of the videos, but on my YouTube channel, Curly G, I would love all the listeners to subscribe. I don't know if you saw any of that stuff, but I love getting slapped around. I mean, it's in my <laughs> DNA. So it's, it's, it's just going to continue. We're going to keep building, doing more video content, uh, bringing uh, laughter to all ages. Uh, so they can uh, find me on, on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You just put up Curly's grandson, Curly G, and you're going to find this crazy guy that is me. That's awesome. Well, Curly G, thank you for taking the time to chat. It was really nice to visit with you, and, and I wish you the very best, my friend. All righty. You okay. guys take care. You tell Heidi she's the best, you're the best, your listeners are the best, and I'll talk <laughs> to you guys soon. Awesome. Again, Curly G, he's one of the Grand Stooges. His grandfather was Curly Howard from the Three Stooges, Larry, Curly, and Moe, and uh, they have this new thing called the Grand Stooges, thegrandstooges.com. We'll throw a link to it to make it easy to find in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Is your credit card a good fit for you? How did you even get the card you have now? Was it mailed to you? Those are usually the worst cards. They typically have higher fees and rates. Someone has to pay all that postage to mail out millions of cards every day. If you like a better credit card, check out the website bettercreditcards.net. This is a great place to find the cards that are usually a better fit for you. Bettercreditcards.net. That's bettercreditcards.net. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Twitter. No, I'm sorry, not Twitter. Twister. (laughs) See, I look at a, a digital screen and everything looks like social media now. Twister, not Twitter. Twister used to be seen as scandalous. Those multicolored dots that you're supposed to be, you know, putting your hands and feet and stuff on. Seems like innocent, nostalgic fun, but it wasn't always that way. When first released in 1966, Sears catalog said it was too risque. They dubbed it as nothing more than sex in a box. So imagine that today. I mean, there you go. It's. That's pretty tame compared to things you can get nowadays. Thanks for listening, because you can actually buy sex in a box, I, I think. I used to love pretty Twister sure. when I was a kid. Yeah, I haven't played that in years. I, I, I mean, now I would end up hurting myself if yeah, I tried I to play Twister. Excuse me. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Here's a fun trip back to the 80s. Surely you can't be serious. Join us in Las Vegas for 80s in the desert May 3rd and 4th. Hang out with other 80s bands. International language of love. Meet several 80s icons from the movies and rock out to awesome music from the 80s. Block the Seagulls, The Romantics, Mr. Mister, Scandal with Patty Smythe, Thomas Dolby, Silence. Pretty Poison, and more. See the full list of bands and icons at radiotravelgroup.com. That's radiotravelgroup.com. Now, fear this. Time for fun with phobias. Ready for this one, Heidi? I am ready. I think you know this one. Okay. Triskaidekaphobia. Uh, we've talked about it. Triskaidekaphobia? Triskaidekaphobia. Fear of crackers. No. Triscuits. No, it's not the fear of Triscuits, not the fear of decks of cards. It's the fear of the number 13. We've talked about that one before. Oh. That's what it's called. Oh. Don't know why. That's Triska. my favorite number, so I don't have a fear of Yeah, that Triska Deca Phobia, fear of the number 13. Today's fun with phobias. Do you have a pretty good sense of humor? You might like this. Early in the morning each day and every day, we share something weird to make people laugh at weirdgiftofthedaycom You don't need to sign up for anything. You don't even need to spend a penny. Just follow the page on Facebook and get a smile to start each day when we share the weird gift of the day. Not on Facebook? That's okay. You can see the weird gifts on our website too. Weirdgiftofthedaycom That's weirdgiftofthedaycom now some weird news brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. A camera caught a man apparently stealing underwear during a recent open house in a California home. Oh, my gosh. They're searching for the man. I suppose if you're into that, what better yeah, place to, places to do those things than to go to random open houses? Surveillance video from the homeowner saw a man being greeted by the realtor inside the home, then walking around the home with a noticeable bulge around his abdomen that wasn't there when he initially walked in the home. They 
the homeowner who doesn't want to be identified said they put the surveillance camera there to monitor the foot traffic. When his wife told him that she was missing some things, he thought, well, let's take a look and see. Upon further review, by golly, look at that. Here's this oh, guy. Oh, my gosh. Stole some push-up bras. It says here the homeowner said they're sharing the story to help other sellers who should contact their realtors about not letting potential buyers roam through their home all alone. That happens all the time, so I oh, can yeah. I can understand where maybe they would want to have people in you know some areas now keeping an eye on things. Yeah, you're always allowed to just mm. kind of walk through the house. Not always, but usually. Yeah, yeah usually. That's Especially weird news. if more than one person exactly. arrives at you know the same yeah. time. It's our weird news brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. Now, your moment of duh, brought to you by FunkyMonkeyShirts.com. Now, a couple weeks ago, we had a story about a guy who got a, a lousy tip when he was delivering somebody's stuff through right. one of these food app things, and then he did something really disgusting to the food. Right. And they recorded it and posted it online, which was really, right. really dumb. He decided to give them a tip of his own. Yeah, uh, something anyway. And uh, now we've got another story that's making the rounds on the old interweb here. A guy was... Waiting for some food. They finally get the food. And then after eating all of the food uh, that was delivered by DoorDash, says here uh, the 15-year-old kiddo drank the entire cookies and cream milkshake, then saw what happened on the video the next morning. Said my dad told me to check out the video from last night. Once he checked it out, he said, I brushed my teeth five or six times. I felt really disgusted because the dude who was delivering for DoorDash decided he wanted some of that milkshake too. So while he was standing on the porch before they came to the door, he took a couple of drinks out of the milkshake before handing it over. The family reported the incident to DoorDash along with a copy of the video, but hadn't heard back at the time of this being posted, which was two weeks after the incident, by the way. So that's not good. Don't do that. I know it's tempting. Delicious milkshake. Maybe snatch a fry here and there. You but know, and I'm not a huge that. germaphobe, so that probably wouldn't, bother wouldn't you? freak yeah. me out. I mean, it's it's weird. That's better than the other one, I can tell you that. Yeah, for sure. If you have to choose one of the two, <laughs> I'll take that. that's the one Every you want. Every time. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Is your credit card a good fit for you? How did you even get the card you have now? Was it mailed to you? Those are usually the worst cards. They typically have higher fees and rates. Someone has to pay all that postage to mail out millions of cards every day. If you like a better credit card, check out the website bettercreditcards.net. This is a great place to find the cards that are usually a better fit for you. Bettercreditcards.net. That's bettercreditcards.net. Now, these three things. Heidi, tell me, what do these three things have in common? Times, Tribune, Post, Newspapers. Yes, good job. You didn't even flinch. It's like you know this stuff. <laughs> I did know that one. Which yes. one of those do you read? <laughs> None. <laughs> that's, a, that's what I thought the answer was. <laughs> Why not, Heidi? Because I don't read newspapers. All right. Just just checking. Why, f- why wait for yesterday's news to come out in print when I can see news instantly on the internet? On the internet. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, yeah, the world the, has changed. To it on the radio. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks for listening to these three things on the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news, and I think this is good news. This is a cool story brought to you by RadioTravelGroup.com, and the time is ticking down, by the way. Um, we are going to be in Las Vegas for 80s in the Desert, and uh, the same group that does that does 80s in the Sand, Access TV. On Sunday, this this weekend, they have a, a big uh, a big debut of a TV show that if you watch that, you might see me and Heidi in the background there. So all of the details uh, on the, the event that's coming up in Vegas, not on the show, but uh, all of the details uh, at uh, radiotravelgroup.com. Alabama Navy ROTC senior credits God for surviving a brain injury. Medical science cannot explain his recovery. 21-year-old senior at Auburn University uh, it says here, suffered a traumatic brain injury last year, but he made a miraculous recovery that medical professionals 
don't know what happened, but several of them said it's a God thing. Wow. That's cool. It says, my doctors told me medical science cannot explain my recovery. They told me God has something to do with it. A geology major and a Navy ROTC program was close to being commissioned last year when surveying rocks along the side of a highway with his fellow classmates, a pickup allegedly operated by a driver under the influence spun out of control and hit oh, him my and a lab partner. Sadly, his lab partner died shortly after the impact. A week after remaining unresponsive, his parents were f- faced with the options of uh, withdrawing treatment, which they ultimately declined after praying over their decision and clinging to a, a Bible verse, Ephesians 3.20. But uh, this young man, instead of being in a vegetative state for the rest of his life, he's improved and gotten better and better and better, and they still have no idea how in the world he snapped out of this and it all just came together. So wow. It's an amazing story. He says, we've beaten all the odds just by being here. I've got a link to the story if you want to read all about it. It is unbelievable, and, and I think that's a cool. I love mi- when miracles happen, and they do all the time. They do. It's just amazing to be a witness to that. Yep, absolutely. It's fantastic. If you'd like to read the story, I've got a link to that in the show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thanks for listening.